Hi everyone, this is New England Prepping Mimi. I hope everyone's having a great weekend. It's Saturday, it is really windy here. Uh, it was warm, but very windy and rainy. Uh, the 60 degree temperatures would have been nice if uh, the sun was out. Um, but, you know, at least we got to lower the heat today. So you can't have everything, right? So on this rainy day, what did I decide to do? I'm going to tell you in a minute. But before we get into the video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like what you see. Show me that you love me by hitting the thumbs up button. And please leave a comment below. All these things combined help me grow my channel. And more people will be able to discover my channel and be my new subscribers as I am trying to grow my channel. Okay, so let's get back into the video. I decided today, well, let's backtrack a little bit. In the fall, um, I was really tired of just um, um, like uh, flash freezing the vegetables and things that I had planted. I have a, a, a pretty good garden for two people. And um, so I, I dug out my dehydrator from last year that um, I used and I enjoyed doing the dehydrating. And I bought my little mason jars, and they looked really cute. And um, I did, like, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, I, oh, carrots. I did everything. Um, and then I started to get a little more adventurous. So I started to look into canning. Um, and I do belong to a couple of groups on Facebook. And... Um, at first, I, I watched some YouTube videos. Um, someone I really love uh, is Mary's Nest. If you could, um, if you'd like to just pop by her channel and tell her that New England Prep and Mimi sent you, she would appreciate it. Just tell her her paisan in New England sent you. <laughs> she will definitely know who you mean. Um, but anyway, I was watching some of her videos and she's really sweet and she explains things so nicely and calmly and thoroughly. So I took her advice and I started to do some water bath canning. And I was always like, oh, the pressure canning, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. I didn't trust myself. I didn't have the confidence. So um, she was saying um, she did a video with the instructions on how to do it stovetop and just a stock pot and what to use and step by step. And so I did some jams and pickle stuff and everything came out really good. So I got a little more confident and I said, well, I, maybe I should look into a canner because in the canning groups, it's like, well, you know how Facebook is, right? It's like everything you do. People post pictures, right? So I got all these women in this group showing me all the pictures of the stuff that they, uh, they're posting all these pictures of, you know, um, they pressure canned, uh, you know, 40 pounds of cabbage and, you know, 37 pounds of potatoes and who's doing cases of strawberries for jam. And I was like, you know, I really, I, I want to try this, you know? I didn't know what to get for pressure canner. I figured the kind on the stove, I was afraid it would blow up the house. Okay, I am not very mechanically inclined. <laughs> if you could see me even trying to rig up my Christmas lights, it was like I put them where I wanted them and then handed it off to my boyfriend and said, here, you plug them in because I would get all confused with the wires and extensions. And I didn't, I just put a new roof on the house and I didn't feel like having a pressure can <laughs> blow a hole through my ceiling and go right through the roof. So I, I really debated on whether or not to get a pressure can. And I was advised to get something that everybody's raving about. They call it um, the Nesco or it was the carry, uh, which is what I'm showing you right now, a picture of this. And they said it's the exact same thing with the exact same buttons. Everything is identical. They just changed the name of it. The colors, everything is the same. So they said get a carry or get a Nesco. It's a it's a smart um it's a smart sorry about that folks. They said it was a smart canner. And it's also a uh pressure cooker, pressure canner, and I can water bath in it. And I said, okay. 
So I bought the Nesco and it sat there for a couple of months. And then finally I decided to do some jam in it and it came out really good. Um, I did um, pickled jalapenos. I was just doing water bath stuff and I didn't really want to get into pressure canning. I was afraid. So when I finally did um, last week, uh Last week, it went pretty good. I did uh, potatoes. I did two quarts. It's only me and my mom here. Um, so I just want to do a little bit at a time, see how it goes. Sometimes I do things in pints or half pints so that, you know, once you open it, we don't have to worry about using it up too fast. So today I got this brainstorm. Nice rainy day, right? Okay. Rainy day in New England. And it's canning season. It's always canning season. <laughs> so... Um, I decided to do some potatoes and then I was getting ready to do a batch of carrots and I had a problem with the canner and I'm going to tell you what the problem is. Um, it seems easy to use, but it's a smart canner and I, I guess they're very sensitive and they're not reliable. That's my opinion. Okay. Um, there's a cycle it has to go through um, before the pressure canning actually starts. So you have your, your jars in there, and you hit high, the high button. See, oh, right there is the high button. And then you hit time, right there, the time button, for however many uh, minutes you're supposed to can that particular item. And then you hit start, and it does a digital chase. And it'll do that for about 10 minutes and steam comes out and it, it's all good, you know. Then you're supposed to get to E10. I don't know what it means. I just know that that's what it's supposed to be. And when I did the water bathing, it worked out beautifully. So it goes to E10 and then it goes, it counts down. It's a, Each one is a minute. So then it's E9, E8, E7, all the way down to zero. When it hits zero it automatically starts the canning process, the pressure canning, and it starts counting down the time, okay? So the it would be like for carrots, it's 25 minutes. So it should be doing the countdown. Four times today, it went to E10. It counted down to E9. And then it went back into a digital chase and nothing happened. It just kept chasing and going on and on. It never counted down to the zero. I was told to unplug it, restart it, you know, reprogram everything and start again. It did it again. Only this time it counted down to seven. And now I've got carrots in there and I'm like, okay, I don't want food poison. I don't want any botulism. I don't know what to do. I unplugged it again restarted it up again it went to e10 and i was like holding my breath i'm like okay god this is it um it counted all the way down to e0 and then nothing happened it just kept doing a digital chase digital chase and it was like that for about a half hour so i got really frustrated and i unplugged it and i cleaned up the kitchen and when those jaws cooled down I'm throwing those carrots away. Thank God it was only four half pints, which is two pints of carrots. Um, I did go into a couple of groups and ask why that was happening. And someone had a very good point. They said uh, two things. It, it could be that they're not really safe for canning because they're not reliable. And that's why they're not um, they're not really authorized by the, uh, I guess, the, the food police to, uh, for what is safe and what isn't. Because um, if it's not reliable, how can it be safe? And someone else said that um, they were told that you should use a power strip plug for it, which, believe it or not, that I know how to do. <laughs> Um, but it got me thinking, um, I'm not opposed to calling customer service and having them walk me through it and see what's going on. Um, I may just do like, like a 
half pint of potatoes again. I just want to see what happens. So I'm, I'm willing to try it. And I'm willing to call customer service if I have another problem. But the point I was trying to make, and I was telling my boyfriend, I says, you know, I says, all this technology stuff is not reliable. And we're doing self-preservation, self-reliance, putting up food because of the economy, the, the, I don't know if we're getting this new world order or what the heck is going on. This whole world has gone insane. And we just want to be able to stock our shelves and be able to provide for ourselves and our families. And how are we supposed to do that if we can't even rely on a canner? So we're doing everything like, quote, unquote, the old-fashioned way by putting up our own food instead of relying on the stores. But we're using a smart canner, and we can't rely on the smart canner. I don't know if that makes any sense to anyone. Um, please leave a comment. Let me know if you know what I'm talking about. It just doesn't make sense. It's like, um, like I have... Like, I have clotheslines, okay? I have an indoor one and an outdoor one, okay? Um, that is in case I lose my electricity or my dryer breaks or gas and electric gets too expensive and I choose to hang my clothes. Plus, I just like the fresh smell. Um, so that's why I have a clothesline. It is a, it's a backup to something. Um, but if you, this is kind of backwards now because if you're going to can, to, to su support yourself and be self-reliant, you're canning, but you're using smart technology, which isn't reliable. So that's like, that's like me having a smart clothesline. What's the point? What's the point? Or if I had a second dryer in case the power went out, makes no sense. I'm still going to need to plug it in. So that's, it, it just brought me, thinking to a point of um, just thinking about things and the less technology we have, I think the better off we're all going to be. If you're doing something to promote self-reliance and self-preservation and food preservation and being frugal, then I don't, um, I, I don't understand why we would rely on something that's like smart technology because we all know it is not reliable. Um, I don't know. Just it, It's just me. I mean, prices are skyrocketing. I threw away five pounds of potatoes that I had done, uh, three pounds of carrots that I'd done. I spent seven hours in the kitchen. Um, it, it was, it was, you know, it's not a lot of work because when it works, it works. And it's it's a satisfying feeling knowing that you can put up your own food during food crisis and, and you know, supply chain issues and things that we're, you know, container ships being docked wherever. It's good to know that you can do that, but I'd prefer to do it the old-fashioned way. And then at least I know it'll get done. I'm not saying it's flawless, and I've got a lot to learn about canning. But before you jump into any kind of smart technology for canning or something like that, think twice. Just take a minute. Think twice. And ask yourself if this is really a good idea to be doing it this way. Aside from that, I also learned that these canners do not hold as much as a stovetop canner would. So you're doing a couple of batches and it's just, it's a lot of work. I prefer to do everything on the stovetop, but that's just me. That's my opinion. But folks, anyway, this is Self-Reliance Saturday. I hope everyone out there did something today to be a little more self-reliant. If you did, let me know what you did in the comments below. And like I said, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Give me some feedback on this video, what you think about the smart canners. And um, give me a big fat thumbs up. Tell your friends to like and subscribe. Tap that bell and you'll be hearing from me every day. I love you folks. You all have a great Saturday night and God bless you. Bye-bye.